<clears throat> that have joined us this morning. This is Harriet Kamek. This is our show, Sunday Morning with Harriet Kamek. Good morning, everybody. People on Facebook are saying good morning. Hi. Hey, everybody on Twitter, Periscope, Facebook, and on YouTube. I just want to say thank you, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. And it is Sunday morning, and it is the first Sunday of September. Is anybody out there feeling this right now, that this is the first Sunday of September? We made it. We're in the final quarter of 2019, and I don't know about you, but this is freaky. Isn't it? It's a little freaky, wouldn't you say? It's just a tiny, tiny bit freaky. And why is that? Because it's the last quarter of 2019. Can you believe that we're actually at the stage where we're seeing the last quarter of 2019? Is, 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 that, is that okay? I don't know about you, but I find that a little, a little touchy, a little feely, because just in a few weeks, it will be my favorite holiday, Halloween. And then after that, it's, it slides, right? Isn't it? Doesn't it? It, it slides right down, right, Michael? It slides right down. It goes down. And then it's Thanksgiving. And then it's the birthday girl. And then it's Christmas. Then it's, we're all sitting there like, okay, great. We're going New Year's. And we're like, oh my God, another year, 2020. That momentous year. Right? So I just want to say thank you to everyone. We're streaming across all platforms. In a few, if you missed the show, you will be able to catch us on Spotify, Google Play, and on Apple in just a few. So give it 24 to 48 hours, and then you'll be able to catch us across all platforms. I just want to say thank you to everyone who has made it possible. We certainly give honor and glory to, the, to God. Amen. Because he has given us the victory through Jesus Christ. Amen. I can't begin to tell you I resume broadcasting on Block Talk Radio. And I, uh, for those of you who know, I have been on Block Talk Radio for, it's 10 years now. And I must say that I was quite surprised when I became aware that I have amassed quite a listenership. I was quite surprised. People were still listening to my shows, and I felt like going back to podcasting, right? That's how I started. I started on mainstream radio here in Detroit, right, in 2009. So I just want to tell you that if you stay the course, you will make it. There have been giants in the land, right? There have been many giants in the land, but we have overcome them all. Amen? So I just want to encourage you on this Sunday morning, that as soon as, if there are giants in your land, you will overcome them too. We stay the course. I wasn't always faithful, but God was faithful. I gave up. I didn't want to do it. There were times when I went through the most incredible seasons when I didn't want to do anything. I didn't want to be a part of anything. But God was faithful, and he helped me to slay the giants. And it was part of the learning process. It's, it's a learning process because if you, you will not know how strong you are until there are giants. You don't know what you can do or your capacity is to endure and your ability to get over stuff unless you have encountered obstacles. Well, that's what happened with me. I encountered more obstacles and more obstacles. The greater the obstacles was the greater was my capacity to endure was the greater my capacity to overcome. So I just want to tell you, thank you. I just want to say thank you and welcome. So this morning, uh, it, it's kind of fortuitous that uh, we are here uh, because yesterday was another mass shooting, right? And I, I promised my audience some time ago that I would not talk about them that I would not tweet about it when it happens because it's contributing to what I call associative trauma. You know that kind of trauma that you watch from afar, but it still impacts your behavior and it impacts your sensors, it impacts your sensibilities and your perceptions of how safe we feel. And that is a big problem for us because now we're beginning to feel unsafe. This person who started this mass shooting yesterday actually started shooting at people on a freeway, so the cops pulled him over. And there began a series of violent, tumultuous events resulting in 21 people being injured. Actually, it was first reported that there were 30 people injured 
and an additional 21 people were shot, but the authorities have since modified that to reflect what they wanted to reflect so that the public safety is not compromised. It's a little late for us because we are like, oh, so you finally got the message that we are concerned? Okay, so we're cooperating with the authorities. We want you to know that we want to be safe. So the, 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 they're interested in making sure that the entire public feels safe as we go about our daily activities. After all, it was Saturday. It's a holiday weekend. People getting ready for this formal back to school here in the Northeast and, and here in the Midwest. In some parts of the country, children had already started school. But it's also college football. So a lot of kids started college, were on college campuses, and classes formally began right so this is the first full week of the fall semester okay and so people are going back to work life is resuming somewhat of a normal pace yeah and we want to feel safe on a saturday we want to feel like saturday is the day we go shopping right saturday is the day not just that we go shopping that's not the only thing we do but saturday is the day we go to the mall saturday is the day we go catch up on watching a movie can we do that right so now they have caused us to want to not go out so what we're going to be prisoners in our own home i don't think so i tend to think that we're going to do exactly what we are supposed to do and whatever you feel like doing have no fear live without fear right right so that was yesterday so it, it kind of i've been talking about it all week and i said it as many times as i could this week that i felt like whenever a mass shooting is going to happen I don't sleep the week preceding. So if a mass shooting is going to happen like Saturday or Sunday, I don't sleep the entire week. It was just this week I told you all that Tuesday night, all night, I did not sleep a wink the entire night. I fell asleep at about 10 o'clock and I was up at quarter to 11, never went back to sleep the entire night on Tuesday. So at about 3 o'clock in the morning, I realized that something was wrong. And I said, no, it cannot be. It, I said, no way. I said, no, we're not going through this. It cannot be another mass shooting. It's going to happen. So I started praying. And then I just got up and, you know, work out and do my stuff. and went about my day. I fell asleep like around midday on Wednesday and slept for two hours. Well, Wednesday night I got a little break. I slept for about three or four hours. But I woke up at four o'clock in the morning. That's when I knew. That's when I knew. And then the big one, Thursday night. Always two nights before the mass shooting, I didn't sleep again. So by Friday, this was me all day. Okay, so where this one is going to be? What's the casualty rate going to be? And I'm like, we got to do something about this. Did not sleep a wink Thursday night. I, I just gave up. After a while, I was just like, Lord, you're just going to carry me through Friday when I'm driving. You're just not going to dim my perceptions. You're just going to not give me high blood pressure. I'm just going to be fine. I'm just going to pray my way through. So I spent most of Thursday night just kind of meditating and praying that the casualty toll would be diminished. So yesterday, while I was preparing for this broadcast, I said to myself, I don't know, it, it's freaky. It's Saturday morning, I woke up and I felt fine. And just as I was starting to think everything was normal, there came the alert on my phone. And I was like, see, I was like, see, it never fails. I didn't sleep how many all of this week. Didn't sleep. I was troubled in my sleep. So why do these things happen to me? I think it's because all of us, and I found I'm not the only person. I found a number of people who I was watching some of you on Facebook who said that you couldn't sleep. Whenever you find that, that is the universe's way of calling your attention. That's God's way of pulling your attention back to where it is supposed to be. Now, some people who watch my show are from Turkey, so you might call God Allah. Here, I'm Christian, so I call God, God, and his son Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. That's just the way it rocks for me, okay? Okay, so I'm not, I'm not trying to offend anybody, but this is, it is what it is. This is my faith. This is how the tenets of my faith work. It might not be your faith, but this is how the tenets of what I believe work, right? So I'm saying all of that to say this, that there comes a time when we kind of have to believe in something, right? And I know here in America, we've had our challenges. We have felt like uh, 
something went wrong with Christianity. Something went wrong. It's not the Christian faith. It's the people who work the faith. It's the people who are the proponents and the giants and the people who are telling you about the faith. This is why Jesus said, follow me. He never said, look at a man or a woman. He, doesn't say, he didn't say, look at Harriet. Because Harriet is, I'm fallible. I'm going to fall. I'm going to faint. I'm not going to be fine. I'm not going to have faith today. Some days I'm on the mountain. Some days I'm down in the valley. But he said, follow me, which means keep your eye on Jesus. If you keep your eye on what is written in the book, you'll be fine. The problem is when we start listening to people, and we start listening to them instead of reading. Your faith in every belief system is comprised of listening and reading. I don't know which system doesn't incorporate that. So if you're not reading and you're not listening, then you're not doing it. You're not really following your faith, right? And especially with Christianity, you got to read the Bible. That's the word. That's what communicates. It, the Bible tells you exactly what you are supposed to do. Look at it this way. The word Bible means basic instructions before leaving earth. Like none of us not planning to leave earth anytime soon. A amen. We just want to say that and keep that out there. Okay. <laughs> right just in case right but it's basic instructions it tells us what to do and what not to do right so i want us to keep that in our focus and the reason i'm saying that is because we live in a day and time when we might have forgotten that we are required to pray and just like i just outlined in my own experience where i found myself having to pray right i found myself needing to pray because why because it, it just was just incredible i mean an entire week without sleep i think i probably if you look under my eyes closely you see it see that i don't even cover it up with concealer because i'm like whatever it, it's the example of how much of a burden some of us carry now i'm not in government and i'm not in politics so I'm not, I'm not, it's not required of me to be responsible for any of the political and social outcomes, but I do have a spiritual responsibility and that spiritual responsibility does not extend to me alone. It extends to you too. It extends to you too. And it extends to you. We're all supposed to pray. We're supposed to pray for peace. Even if it looks like it's never going to be peaceful, there are some areas where there's conflict forevermore. They'll always be fighting. They'll never agree. Still pray for peace. Pray for peace in your immediate circumstances. Pray for peace around you. Pray for peace in your community as you go about your daily activities, right? Pray for peace. We're all required to pray for peace, right? So pray, pray, and more pray. I can't begin to tell you the benefits of praying. It took me a long, long time. Hey, y'all. It took me a while. It didn't just arrive here. It took a long, long time, right? So that's what I want to talk about. That's why I felt impressed upon me to talk to you today about the giant slayer. I know many of us have heard stories and I, and I just want to encourage you for just a few brief minutes. You might not stay here with me the entire time. You might just be here for a few. I recognize that people are busy and people have things to do. And while you're talking to me, there are alerts and so on on your phone that prove a distraction that you probably will be tempted to just be distracted by. That's entirely up to you. But the Bible says, he who hath an ear to hear, let him hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. So if you feel like this is something that you need to hear, I encourage you to just stop by for just a few minutes and to listen as we talk about the giant slayer. Now, we began this series, Sunday mornings with Harry Kimmick, that developed out of my own need. As you know, I'm an ordained minister, yeah, for some time now. And I was in a church, a formal church structure. But like everybody else, my spiritual need became greater than what that formal structure was providing. I found that they, it was at odds with the leadership that they seemed to have gone in a different direction than where my spiritual need was leading. And so I had to find a way to still deal with my spiritual need. I still had a need for a spirituality. I found that as I got older, that I wanted to connect. I, I, I knew my purpose, but I wanted to be assured that I was walking in my purpose. And I had a need for spirituality. I had a need that only God could answer. I had a need that no man could answer. I didn't try that. 
I didn't have to try, you know, some of us have tried men and sex. Some of us have tried women and sex. Some people have tried women, men and, se and sex to, find, to satisfy that deep down spiritual need. Some people have used drugs to fill that need. As if they're, they're, it's like a void in your life that needs to be answered. Some people have used drink. Some people have used all kinds of drugs, all kinds of perfidious things, all kinds of stuff we have used to supplement that need that we have for this deep spiritual connection. Some people have used food and are still using food to fill that need. But I found that nothing, I knew instinctively that there was nothing that was going to fulfill that need except that I found the source of the spiritual need. I had to go to the source. And in going to the source, I tried to navigate various churches and to navigate amongst the leadership. I tried to stay dumb and stay in the, you know, sit in the pews and not be involved in anything. But I found even when I chose to sit in the pews and not be involved, that it still wasn't satisfying my need. And I asked myself, if I feel this way, then how do others feel? Well, how do they supplement that need? So I just sat down for two years. And all I did on a Sunday morning when I felt it stir up, on a Sunday when I felt like my tradition is to get dressed and go into church, and it didn't happen. I said, well, I got to fulfill that need some other way. So I found worship music. So I would sit in front of my TV for two years and just listen to worship music. I did try everybody else's church. It didn't work out. And then I realized that you are going to have to help others to guide them to this need and to help them find their way to it. And so in doing that, we start Sunday mornings with Harry Kim. The goal is eventually I'll probably get a building. It probably will end up there. I'll get a building. I don't know if I'm going to call it a church. It's just going to have a name and you show up there. And if you are not in town to show up there, then you will stream just like you're streaming right now. Right? And you will listen and you're still going to be blessed. So let's just say amen. So today I want to talk about the giant slayer. And I know many of us are familiar with the story in the Bible about Goliath. You ever heard about Goliath? You, you remember that story? Goliath and David. And David was this little short guy. And Goliath was this big tall guy. But it's not the typography of that that I want to draw your attention to. I want to draw your attention to the giants that occupy our lives. And I'm going to tell you in my story, so maybe, just maybe, you'll find yourself in my story, right? And what I found was, in my story, there were many giants that occupied my land. I was given a promise. I was given, and the promise is not necessarily the promised land. How many say, you know, you think of the promised land as a physical destination, Sometimes it's not a physical destination. It's a place that you have to get to where all your desires, your hopes, your dreams, the stuff that nobody knows about that you pray to and ask about. You could be driving down the street and you just say, Lord God, if you can hear me, God, if you're out there, God, if you hear me, can you just make me get this job? Can you make me get this promotion? God, if you're here, some of us even pray for a good parking spot. Anybody ever had that happen to them? That's me all day. Just pray for a good parking spot. Lord, I'm on this freeway and the car is fishtailing and I don't know. God, if you're out there, just hear me. Some of us pray for our marriages to work. Lord, please, when I go home this evening, just let my husband be nice. Just let my wife be nice. Some of you pray that the babysitter won't charge you because you had to pick up the kids on the way home. <laughs> right? And some of you just pray, will I have a good hair day today? Lord, just don't let the humidity be so bad. I have a presentation to make. Lord, please just go before me. And so these are the utterances of what represent our humanity. And we're just going along. And, and now people say, well, ask the universe. I've even said it myself. When you're in certain forums and certain people have become very uh, risk averse to talking about the universe. And I can't blame anybody, especially people who are of different sex or in sexual orientations, right? Christians or people purporting to be fundamentalist Christians have so characterized and denigrated human beings that nobody wants to be associated with being a Christian, right? Some of the people who are representatives of the Christian faith have done some horrible things, haven't they? They've done some things that you're like, I don't even know if I want to go into a church. Right? 
Good morning, Arthur Henderson, right? So some people have said things like, I'm not even going back to a church because what I see that pastor do, I know that man is down there every Sunday just collecting your money. And then as soon as Sunday evening comes, he's in a, you know, he's in a place of ill repute, right? There are many other names for them, but I'll stick to that one for now, right? And so what happens is that we tend to, we're like, well, I don't want to be associated with that. People who call people names, you know, they call people all kinds of names. They, are pre they display prejudices biases they display racism colorism classism and every kind of ism and you look at yourself and you're like is that what you christians do i don't want to be a part of it right and then you look you look at another faith you say well maybe i join islam and you look over there and you're like whoa but they hate women they don't believe in the autonomy of women uh they so they practice sexism and fundamentalism where it's so strict and so rigid that the human, the human part of you can't function. So you're like, I don't want to have anything to do with that faith either. So you look over and you look at Buddhism and you're like, dang, they just believe in everything out there, don't they? Mm, I'm not sure that that works for me. Then you look at Confucianism and you're like, I'm confused. By the time you get there, you're like, I am so totally confused. Well, where is God in all of this? And that I call the intersection of our humanity and our divinity. Because now you recognize that you're really searching. And sometimes what God does, he allows you to navigate through all these arenas until you come to a place where you have truth. And your truth gives you peace. And that peace is when you come to the place where you say, you know what, I just need God and I got to find a way to express my need for God and to find a way where that need is satisfied. Well, here I come, right? So I'm a firm believer that you come as you are. I believe that all of us come to God just the way you are. He accepts you just as you are. He doesn't need you cleaned up. He doesn't need you brushed down. He doesn't need you to put on a cloak. You know, we go to church every Sunday morning and we put on our finery. And God doesn't need you like that. You know, the only part of you he needs is the part of you that is willing to submit to the fact that, you know something, I get to a place where I can't handle this anymore, and I need God. I pray that you won't get to that part when you find yourself in a hospital bed. If that is your feeling, if that's where you are, that's fine. We'll pray for you. I pray that you don't find yourself when you're about to be sentenced to jail because you did something and now you're wondering what goes. I pray if that is even your fate, I'm still going to pray for you. I pray it's not when you realize that this marriage is not going to work. When you realize that you run out of options and all the money you thought you had is not going to help you through retirement. And then you realize that you don't have anyone. You live alone. You lived your life so selfishly that now you don't have anybody to share it with. Even if that is where you find yourself, it's still your intersection of your humanity and divinity. So I'm just going to pray for you that this is where you are so you come as you are. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for these folks who are gathered this morning to hear this word. Let us be doers of the word. Help us as we express this word that has come from us, that has come through our spirit to you, to your people. I pray that they will be blessed in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. So I've been talking about the giant slayer. Well, who or what is the giant slayer? You know, we have various needs. We have various situations that happen to us. It is common for us as human beings to encounter situations that perhaps challenge us. Anybody been there? Living witness. In, you know, I've encountered many giants in my story. In my story, I was married to someone who was emotionally and physically abusive. He beat me within an inch of my life. On November 2, 1999, he held a knife to my ribs and told me that he would kill me, take me out, myself, and my then seven-year-old daughter. He was serious. He said nothing would happen to him. Even if he went to jail, they'd lock him up, and it would be years before he would be given the electric chair. Meanwhile, I would be dead in a grave and no one could see me. When that didn't work, he then proceeded to beat my face. And he beat me so that I would become compliant to his will. He thought he was a giant, and he was a giant of a man. He was much taller than I was. He was 6 feet 2 inches tall, and he weighed 250 pounds. At the time, if I weighed 120 pounds, most days I got on the scale, I was barely making it to 120. 
I would pray I made it to 120 pounds. I kid you not. So when people look at me today and say, oh, you've gained weight. I'm like, glory be to God. Life is good. Amen. <laughs> Amen. I mean, I'm like, I'm celebrating the fact that I can eat without fear. I can eat when I want to. So maybe, you know, my hormones are just relaxed because I don't live in a constant state of apprehension and fear. Yesterday, I went to visit a friend and she said, uh, you've gained so much weight. I wasn't even offended, even though I should have been. I could have said many things about her, but it's not my, you know, it's just not me. But I said to her, life is good because I'm going back to a time when life wasn't good. When I had a giant in front of me and I needed the giant slayer to manifest. So I was searching for my giant slayer. I had read the Bible and I had walked on the altar and accepted Jesus Christ. You know how Christianity works. Every faith has its own come to Jesus moment is what I call it, right? And I was reading the Bible and I wanted to find myself written in the stories of the Bible. I wanted to see how relevant that was to me and my situation because here I am. I live in a country that is not mine. I found myself in America. I lived with a man who intended to kill me and destroy me. And I didn't think that that was my story. I didn't think my story was supposed to end at age 32. Anybody here is a witness? Anybody a witness? I didn't think that 32 was going to be the day when I was going to lose my life and that I was going to be killed. I really didn't believe that, y'all. So I was searching to find myself. Say, find yourself. I was searching to find a giant slayer who was going to slay this giant. And as if that were not enough, it was compounded by what we now call an immigration crisis. I'm in a country where I couldn't go. I couldn't leave. If I left, I couldn't come back. I had a child that was his and it was his child and he had he was going to exercise his rights as a citizen that I didn't have. And so I needed a giant slayer. And my quest to find a giant slayer took me through some of the worst moments of my life. But I survived them all. And that's why I can tell you about the giant slayer named Jesus Christ. His name is Jesus Christ. We also call him God. Right? And what happened was I came to know God in the fullness of my suffering. I lived in a day and time when I didn't have any rights. I was terrified to call the police. And many of you are saying, well, if you live with someone who is beating you up, why don't you call the police? It is not uncommon for many victims of violence not to call the police because you're terrified. One, you're terrified of the authority. Two, the person who is bringing violence against you tell you that if you call the police, they are going to kill you. And guess what? You believe them because you know when the police come, they leave. They don't stay with you for life. They don't live with you. So you believe the person. It was also compounded by economics, as in many victims of violence, right? I had economics to deal with. I had to figure out, well, where am I going to live? How am I going to support this child? How am I going to support myself? How am I going to support my child? If I have to move out of this violent scenario, I had some giants to slay. And I needed to find myself and get attached to a giant slayer. In searching for a giant slayer, I became earnest about reading the Bible. Because I had read a story in the Bible literally, and I took it literally. I said, they say the Bible is literal. I'm watching all these folks on TV preaching, and they say the Bible is literal. I'm like, okay, well, it better manifest a real giant slayer just about now, right? So I started reading the Bible to find myself imprinted on the pages of the Bible to see if my story resonates with anybody's experience found in the Bible. Guess what I found? Many times over, there are 66 chapters of the Bible that might as well have called Port Harriet as chapter 1, chapter 2, chapter 3, all the way to chapter 66. My name was written all over the whole thing. I was so surprised. I couldn't believe it. There were many days when I was reading the Bible, I kid you not, that exactly what I would read in the Psalms is exactly what would manifest that day. After a while, it built me up. It gave me confidence because I'm like, this I'm going to overcome. This I am pretty sure I am going to overcome because if I can find this story for this day, it promises right here that I'm going to get through it. I was pretty sure that I was going to get through it. Do I have a witness? I am the witness. So I became the witness to the giant slayer. And I began to realize after a while 
that the stories that are told in the Bible are not just stories. They're stories of other people. They're stories of how other people overcame. They're stories of how other people found themselves in situations that terrifies you, situations that bound you up. You don't know how much you need a giant slayer till you find yourself facing a giant that nothing you can do can tear it down. There was not enough money in the world. There was not enough power. I needed a power that was greater than the United States government. The government had the power to destroy my life. Removing me from my child would have destroyed my life. The government had that power. And my husband was the agency through which that power was going to be enacted. So I looked at him. I looked at me. I looked at my child. And I said, somebody got to be slayed and it ain't me and her. So I went to pray. So I found that in the Bible, if I fasted and prayed, then I was going to receive what was the desires of my heart. So I fasted. And I prayed. It took three years. Looking back on it, it's the longest three years of my life. Tr truthfully, my friends, it did not seem like three years. It seemed like an eternity. I went through living hell. There were days when he took the phone out of the wall. You remember those days? When you had the cordless phone, he would take the phone out of the wall Unplug the phone from the phone jack. Anybody remembers that? We used to have phone jacks. All you millennials who just pick up a phone and plug it in now and so on. We used to have phones with a jack that you had to plug in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then you would press the numbers and you could hear them dialing. Yeah. Just kidding. It's true. Right? But he would take the phone out of the phone jack and take the whole phone, not just the, the, the instrument. He took the bass, put it in his car and drove off. After he beat me up so I couldn't call anybody for help. I lived in, in a town called Daytona, Florida, Deltona, Florida, north of Orlando, on your way to Daytona Beach. Right? Uh, 261 Autumn Ridge Road. I kid you not. Right? We lived in a little subdivision that was new. There was a forest behind us some days. If it weren't for the snakes in Florida and stuff, I probably would have ran into the, to the forest some days. I kid you not. That's how much the giant in the land oppressed me. So I read the Bible some more. One of the things I liked doing was jogging to relieve myself of the pressure. So I would go running. But then a, a neighbor's dog chased me down the street and my hair was flying in the wind and that didn't work. No, it didn't work. So I had to stop. That's how come I do on the spot jogging now. I run in place. Yeah, because, you know, when you go, you know, people have a way of letting their dogs out. And who let the dogs out? Yeah, who let the dogs out? They just have the dog out there and the dog chased me and I was running and the dog was thinking it was fun and I didn't think it was fun so I was screaming and the dog was barking and it just it was not a happy place to be so there I ran back home and I didn't run to safety I ran into the giant even the dog was afraid of him mm -hmm. yeah right so there I was in this situation where I needed a giant slayer and I needed God to come to my rescue quick fast and in a hurry I didn't need him tomorrow I needed him today but somehow, my tomorrow didn't come for three years. And I had to walk over hot coals and navigate all the snakes and the scorpions. And there were, because there was a snake one time on, in, the, in the garage. Yeah, you know, in Florida, they have this. Anyway, um, in other words, there were real snakes as well as the literal ones, as well as the fictional ones. I had to navigate this man's many moods. He was schizophrenic and I did not know. He had many personalities, but most of them seemed to all be one. To me, they were all one because they were all just violent. He was just violent, except at moments when he calmed down. And do you see what I'm saying? And it was during those moments that I would ask him, what happened to you? How did you come to be violent? How can you go from mad raging maniac one minute threatening to kill me and beat me up, slamming me against the wall? It's a miracle that my brains are still in place and my facial structure, I, I haven't lost any bones. They have done uh, x-rays on my face. Everything is intact. Praise the name of the Lord, right? And I would ask him, how do you go from that to this? What happened to you? And he couldn't answer. 
He could just say, I don't know what comes over me. You ever hear anybody say that? I'm like, this is a situation that is too big for me. This man has multiple personalities. His multiple personalities, one minute he was meek and mild, the next minute, don't leave me, don't leave me. I'm terrified that if you leave me, that something bad will happen to me. So when that appeal didn't work the way he thought it would, because I still was gonna try to leave, what he did was he would control my movement. If I went to work, he would call me several times just to make sure. They say he used to hover in the parking lot just to make sure I was still there. I kid you not. I was terrified. I was so terrified. I didn't know how I was going. So where was my family? Well, my father had always been absent, so I didn't have one. So he kind of had taken off a long time ago. So my mother lived here in Detroit. When the situation got too much and I would call her, then she, you know how moms are. They, they perform what is called an intervention. You know that mom intervention where mom picks up the phone and goes holy rockers on someone and hello somebody. She did call him once and she, he didn't touch me for about three weeks. She said, if I have to come down there and straighten you out, oh, she went to town on him. She became a giant slayer. But then when she hung up the phone with him, she would call me back and she said, look, you got to get out of this. I'm not comfortable with this. This is going to kill you. I, you know, I don't want you there. You got to come and take my grandchild out of this. And I'm like, Lord, but if I go, he's going to follow me. He's going to take the child from me because he terrified me. He threatened me. He said, if we go to divorce, he's going to get custody. And the child I know was going to hurt because children like to have both parents. So my mother said, but you are keeping the child in a situation that is hurting her even more get her out of it so at least she will have some peace she'll make up her own mind about what she wants to do to get her out and so i prayed some more and the answer came not in a way that i thought it would i mean everybody wants you know your rescuer to come riding in on to your emotional rescue on a white horse it didn't come that way it took a whole different turn God sent a man, a regular man, just a short man. He didn't even look like a giant himself. And he was the one who said, the way we're going to get you out of this is you're going to come into my house and he can't come and get you there. And if you come into my house, he can't come and get you. And then you file for divorce and file a restraining order. He became my rescuer. That was my giant slayer. He was like five feet nine. I kid you not. God used someone else. Everybody else had a lot to say. All the Christians around me had everything to say. Because yes, I was in a church. I even went to the pastor of the church. They didn't even have a ministry or some kind of place for women like myself to go and offload and talk about. I kid you not. That's why today I stand in the gap for women. This is why today I have the Exodus Foundation where I set up for victims of violence and for women who have been abused because I recognize that there are people who sometimes can't get any regular help. Come on. There are places where you can't go and get any help and people have to attach all kinds of stuff. We're privately funded. Nobody gives me any money. The government, the state, the county, the city, they don't give me any money so I can take in anybody whom I want to take and they stay for as long as they want to stay until I feel like they, well, you're ready to go. You think you're ready to go. That's fine. Because that's what happened to me. I didn't have all the Christians, all the believers who were standing around me. Not one jack person said, come into my house and run from that man who is slaying you. Not one person took me in. Not one person. My child who was six and seven at the time told everybody around her that daddy is going to kill mommy. Help my mommy. Help my mommy. Not one person answered. But you know who did? Slowly but surely, God worked it. I had to learn patience. This is why today I go, maybe that's why I'm going to the doctor frequently because I'm like, when I think back of all the stuff that I had gone through, I wonder how it didn't leave any residue on me. What was, I keep asking myself, what's the residual effect? Yes, I had post-traumatic disorder for a while. I had PTSD for uh, several years after, but I'm looking for the physical manifestations of all that trauma. 
and the doctors can't find not even one. So I went to all the doctors and they can't find anything. I went to the hospital. That's a check out my heart. Check out everything. They can't find nothing. So I went to the dentist. I'm like, even the dentist must can't find something. And the dentist sat down and said, what's your problem? You have fillings in your mouth. Their enamel is intact. Your, your gums are fine. What's your problem? I'm like, oh my God, you mean to tell me God literally brought me on? Yes, he slayed every giant that faced me. He slayed every giant because there is no way that God was going to allow me to have the physical manifestations of the problem that had come against me. Not when I believe, not when I was busy telling everybody else that if you trust God, no, God was going to solve the problem. And that's why I can tell you today about the giant slayer. His name is Jesus Christ. You don't believe me? Go read all 66 pages of the book. Just like I found my name written in every chapter, I guarantee you, you're going to find your name written in every chapter. This is why when they say, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, you can hate me, you can unfollow me, you cannot talk to me anymore. If you feel like you can even call me all kinds of names, baby, I have heard all the names, but this one thing I know, and this one thing I'm going to do, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, because that's what saved me. Do I have a witness? I am the living witness. When nobody else came, that's who came. My own fa You can't unfollow me and hurt me and call me all kinds of names on social media. It's not going to be any different than what my own family members did. They called me a Jesus freak. When I wouldn't shack up and live with men and all kinds of stuff, and I would have a flat tire on the road and I wouldn't call AAA because I called AAA so many times and I would call them and say, hey, come and get me. I just call a tow truck to come get my car. Can you come and get me? And they're like, well, what you need is a man. You're such a Jesus freak. You need a man. And I said, no, I'm the preacher. I can't exactly do that. And they're like, well, that's exactly why you need a man. And so what happens is they call me a Jesus freak, but I'm not ashamed. Because when I was in my mess, when I was down and out, when I was in trouble, the only hand that came out to help me was God. God would send people to line up just like I would be on the side of the road waiting for help. And some nice stranger would come by and say, you need some help, lady? You want some help? Let me and my friend here see if we can get you out of this. Ooh, Jesus. That's what happened. Do I have a witness? So I'm here to tell you about the giant slayer who came to my rescue. And when he sent somebody to pull me out of that situation, just so that I could have peace, just so my ex-husband could back off, just so that he would leave me alone, just so that he would stop tormenting me. Because even when I left, we still had to talk. We had to go through courts and, you know, you have a child in common. He terrorized me, but you know what he couldn't do? He couldn't come near the giant slayer couldn't terrorize me enough. He used to, when I lived with him, he took one morning, he was so angry and so, com you know, so filled with rage. He took my Bible and ripped the pages of the Bible out and put it in the trash can in the garage and said, now you bow to me. I am your God. Like, seriously? And I told him, you're going to live to regret that because one day you're going to need to call on God. And I don't know if he's going to answer you because you ripped. And I said, you can't destroy that. You can burn the Bible. You can tear the pages out, but you're not going to stop my belief. I'm still going to pray. I'm still going to believe that God will take me out. And he's like, well, God hasn't shown up for you yet. Where is your God that you believe in? I said, just wait long enough. The manifestation of him will come and God will provide. And sure enough, it happened in three years, the longest three years. I don't know what it is about me in three years because fast forward some more years into the future, I found myself in a situation that took three years to work out. But when God came, he has a way of showing up. You ever heard the song that says he doesn't come when you want him, but he'll be there right, right on time? And you know the song that that guy sings, Fred Hammond, that says late in the midnight hour, God's going to turn it around? Well, that's what happened to me. It was my midnight hour had come and God turned it around and it was overnight and expeditious and it was soon. And when it happened, it was like, boom, I was there one minute. The next minute I was out of there and gone free of the abuse. I never lived in abuse again. Once I got out of it, I never lived in it. 
I told myself, no, I would never put myself through the terror of living with someone who constantly was going to beat you up and beat you up. And in a lot of ways, I had PTSD for years and years and years because I kept telling myself, if you find yourself in a relationship with a man, this is what they're going to do. So for years, I stayed away from relationships until I felt like I was strong enough that even if they came and he tore my infrastructure down, I could build myself back up because this is the temple. And I don't know who, I don't know about you, but we all need somebody. We all need to have a giant slayer. We all need somebody to be there for us. We all need a giant slayer. So I am going to encourage you this day, whatever obstacles you are facing, Whatever it is that you are believing God for, I promise you, he will come to your help. There is a giant slayer who is ready for you. There is a giant slayer. You must come and come quickly. Come on now. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Don't let them, t listen, don't let them deter you. Don't let them stop you. You must come to the giant slayer. You just say a simple prayer. Well, you say, well, Harriet, how do I find this giant slayer you're talking about? Where do I find him from? Well, it's simple. You just need to stand right where you are, right where you are, just sit right where you are. All you need to do is just say a prayer. And then after you say a prayer, I'm going to tell you to go read the book of Romans. Start right there. Read John chapter one, and then fast forward over to the book of Romans. Stay in the book of Romans. It's going to tell you how to navigate and walk according to the giant slayer. He is a giant slayer. He showed up for me. This was this girl. I was just a country girl. You know, I like to tell folks I'm an unsophisticated country girl uh, out here in the big bad world. Well, I was just this country girl, you know, and, and, and I didn't have much. I was an immigrant, and I was just sitting there, and I didn't know how to navigate. I didn't know what I was going to do. This man took my passport. Yes, he did. He can't. This is why I identify with victims of trafficking. He took my passport, y'all. I didn't have it. <laughs> right? <laughs> I couldn't prove who I was. I just knew my name long time. Good thing. Right? And I had the giant slayer. <laughs> and I can laugh today because of the giant slayer. So I just want you to come. Come quickly. Just pray. Just all you need to do, just pray. That's all. It's that it's that simple. Yes, it's the simple way to start. You gotta start somewhere. Right? Just start somewhere and ask for Lord Jesus. Here he comes. Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Help me. I have problems. I have giants in the land. I need you today. I need you this week. I need you in my family. I need to pray for myself. There are things going on I don't understand. I go to the doctor and they tell me something that they're not sure about. They see something. Lord, I think I'm seeing things at work that I might not have a job. I have to retire. I don't know what I'm going to do. They say the job might not exist. There's so much uncertainty. You know, there are mass shootings. I can't go out with my family. I live in a town where there was one recently, and I know a family who is hurting. Father, come into our hearts. Help us. As we navigate these many ways, when people are telling us that our faith isn't real, that you're not supposed to have faith, why do you believe in Jesus? Jesus isn't real. Jesus is filled with hate. No, the people, the fundamentalist people, the people who want to kill others, they believe that. But God, you are not. You have revealed yourself to us that you are the God of love. And I invite you into my heart to say, Amen. That's all you need to say. That simple. So now, Go to John chapter 1. The book of John. You ever read it? In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. Okay. Read that. Take your time. Read it. If you only read five verses per day, read it. Then go over to the book of Romans. That's the Christian roadmap. It tells you how to live. When you're finished with Romans... Then you can go take on the big bad guys in the Old Testament. Because Romans is going to show you why Jesus is Jesus. And what happened in the past. And then you will learn to put things into perspective. That the way it started didn't end the way God wanted it. So he had to bring a change somehow. So John chapter 1. Then the book of Romans. 
and then you will smile. So all the giants in your land, I'm not going to sit here and promise you that they're all going to disappear like magic. It wasn't magical for me. It took three years that felt like an eternity. Three years of hell. But this one thing I do know, when I emerged from those three years, I had the greatest peace that I've ever had. So come quickly. Come as you are. God doesn't care if you are this, that. God doesn't have these boundaries that people put up are traditions of men. Hear me out. They are traditions of men. All God asks. Jesus says, come as you are. In the Bible, Jesus said in the scriptures in the book of Matthew, what did he say? He said, this one thing I ask you to do, this one commandment I leave with you, love one another as you love yourself. That's all he asked. He, didn't, he took away the, 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 you know, the, the, all the laws. He took it away because it was destructive, because the traditions of men use those things to oppress and suppress people. So he said, just love one another and come. And that's my prayer for you. So go to my website, harrykamuk.com, and make sure that you be a blessing to us. Go to the exodusfoundation.com. Make sure that you go and see what we do for victims like myself, women who were caught up in a situation where we needed help and we couldn't get any help and there was no help and all the giants around us, all the giants in our homes who prevented us from seeing freedom, how they were slaves. That's why I have the Exodus Foundation. I too have become a giant slayer. Help me be a giant slayer. Thank you so much, everybody. It's Sunday morning. Thank you for joining me. I sincerely enjoyed my time with you. And I hope that you will come again <laughs> and see me. Amen. See you tomorrow. Be blessed, everybody. Right. Thanks so much. Thanks so much. So go to my website, harrietcamock.com. Thanks so much, everybody. Be blessed.